Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about the pollen grains. Now what are pollen grains? Now we understood that these microspores are later going to form the pollen grains. So they are nothing but the male gametophyte. What is gametophyte? Gametophyte is that structure which forms the gametes. So Pollen grain is the male gametophyte and the male gametophyte is always haploid. So they just differentiate to form the male gametes. Now let us look at the structure of the pollen grain. It is a tiny spherical structure. So it's going to be small. It has two layers. And what are those two layers? The outer layer is called exine. Since it is externally located, so it is called exine. And the inner layer, since internal, is called intine. So exine and intine are the two layers. So this layer which you see outside, this is exine and the inner layer is the intine. So exine is the hard outer layer. So it is extremely hard. So why do we have this layer? So its purpose is basically to ensure protection, so that is why it is rigid. What is it made up of? What makes it so hard and tough? It is made up of sporopollenin. Now, what is sporopollenin? It is a chemically very stable compound uh, which is well preserved in soils and sediments. So, this is the composition of enzyme. This is nothing but a polymer. You would have studied about polymer in your chemistry. So, this is a polymer. And uh, it constitutes the outer wall of spores and pollen grains, and that is why the name is poropollenin because it, it generally makes up the outer wall of spores and pollen grains. That's why right, the name. It is highly resistant. Now, that is the property of uh, uh, sporopollenin, and that is why it serves extremely good when present as an outer layer. However, there are certain regions on the enzyme where sporopollenin is not present. For example, you can see these gaps. And these gaps where sporopollenin is not present, they are known as the germ pore. Why pore? Because it is like a hole. And we will see how this germ pore, that is what role this germ pore plays in the process of fertilization. We will have a look at that a little later. So germ pore is to, are those areas on the enzyme where sporopollenin is absent. So sporopollenin is absent at the germ pores. Now let us look at the inner layer that is in time. It is a thin inner layer. So here you can see this inner layer and this is your in time. So it is quite thin when compared to enzyme. It is composed of cellulose and pectin. So these cellulose and pectins are also for the composition for the cell walls. So basically this, this is the basic structure of pollen grain. Now another important thing to note here is that we spoke about the sporangium, right? So each anther has four microsporangium, that is four sacs. Now inside each sporangium, thousands of microspores are formed because inside each sporangium, you have a lot of uh, sporogenous cells which together make the sporogenous tissue and each sporogenous cell is going to produce four microspores but there are multiple sporogenous cells therefore there are thousands of microspores which are being formed or you can say there are thousands of pollen grains which are going to be formed inside each microsporangium so please have that concept clear in your mind so now the question is the conversion or the transformation from microspore to pollen grain. So how the microspore changes or how the microspore uh, forms the pollen grain. So let us try to understand this step by step. So let us look at the transformation of microspore to pollen grain stepwise. Now first of all, what, do you, what did we see? We had the microspores which were formed. Now this is just one microspore which is being shown in this on the screen. 
So what happens to this microspore? The first thing that happens is expansion of the microspore. So microspore tends to expand. It tends to get bigger. Okay. What next? Formation of a large vacuole. We all by now know what is a vacuole, right? It is generally used. It is something which is very exclusive to the plant cell and it is used for food storage. So large vacuoles tend to form. Now what will happen when large vacuoles form? So here you can see these are the vacuoles. So these are the vacuoles which get formed. Now what will happen when big vacuoles tend to form inside the same cell? So those vacuoles also need some space. So who provides that space? So in order to accommodate the vacuoles, one thing is the cell is expanding. The microspore is expanding. Secondly, in order to give space to these vacuoles, the nucleus, which was earlier here, it gets shifted to one side towards the wall of the microspore. So if you see, this is the wall of the microspore, right? The circumference of the circle, which you see in this picture. So you see the nucleus shifted from this position, the central position, to an eccentric position against the microspore wall. And this movement of the nucleus happened due to vacuolation, that is due to the formation of the vacuole. Now, please note that this process of development of the pollen grain from the microspore is a very progressive development. It doesn't happen just like that. It takes time. It happens gradually. Okay, so now what next? After this, the nucleus undergoes the first pollen mitosis. Mitosis. So mitosis is what? It is equational division. So the chromosome number is going to be the same. It is not going to get reduced. Now anyways, the microspores which were formed, they were haploid, right? And the male gametes which we need or the pollen grains for that matter, they are also haploid. So we really don't want the chromosome number to change. Now, when we don't want the chromosome number to change, what kind of cell division do we want to happen? Exactly. It is equational division. That is mitosis. So now the nucleus undergoes the first mitosis. That obviously means that there are going to be more mitosis coming its way. Okay. Now, the, after the first mitosis, what is the result? Two cells are formed. Now, the interesting thing here is that the two cells which are formed, they are not exactly equal. They are unequal. So, one of the cell is quite large in size and that is the vegetative cell. The other one which is comparatively smaller in size is the generative cell. So, these are the two cells which are formed. So, here on the screen you can actually see the two cells. The bigger cell is the vegetative cell. So this is the vegetative cell and the smaller one is the generative cell. Now in many cases, almost in 60% of the cases, these two cells which are formed, this is the stage. So what kind of stage it is? It is a two cell stage because two cells are formed from one cell. One cell was the microspore. What are the two cells which are formed? The vegetative cell and the generative cell. Now in 60% of the cases, the pollen grains are released at in the two cell stage. That means these two cells which are formed, they actually release the pollen grains. They are actually released as the pollen grains and the pollen grains contain the male gametes. Now what about the remaining 40% of the cases? Now this doesn't happen always. Now in other 40% of the cases, what happens is that there is another stage which comes into picture by another mitosis. Let us see what happens there. So in that case, in those 40% of the cases, so see for 60% of the cases, the process ends here. Please understand this. But for the remaining 40%, what happens is the generative cell detaches from the pollen grain wall. So the generative cell will detach itself. And then now the generative cell is the smaller one. And the vegetative cell is the bigger one. So the bigger cell will eat up the smaller one. So eat up in the sense it will engulf it. So the generative cell will come inside the vegetative cell. Let us suppose this is the vegetative cell and this is the generative cell. So this will be engulfed. So after some time, you will see this is the vegetative cell and inside this is the generative cell. So that is known as being engulfed, right? So then what happens? Then this structure which is formed is known as cell within a cell structure because the generative cell is now within the vegetative cell. So this is a cell within a cell structure.
So what happens now? Now this generative cell which is inside, so the generative cell will again undergo mitosis. So what will happen? Whenever mitosis will occur, two cells will be formed. Right? So two sperm cells are formed which are enclosed within the vegetative cell. So what kind of stage is this? So this is a three cell stage because you actually have three cells. What are the three cells? The two cells which are formed inside, one, two and the one which is there outside, the vegetative cell. So total you have three cells. So that is why it is said that in, in some cases, in some of the uh, flowers it happens that the pollen grains are released at the two cell stage whereas in some others it is released at the three cell stage. So please understand this process uh, very carefully because this is very very important. Okay, so now there are quite a few things which I did not discuss about these two types of cells that is the generative cell and the vegetative cell because there are quite a few distinct facts about them. So let us have a quick look at visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt a free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.